Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So some of you might be aware that during 2024 I made some upgrades to my sim setup. I've gone from an AMD 5600X to a 5800X 3D and I swapped out my Nvidia 3070 for a 4080 Super. So I hadn't honestly planned on making this video as it kind of seemed a little bit self-indulgent but quite a few of you have been asking in the comments and in the live stream chats to make an updated graphics settings video in light of these recent upgrades. So after a few weeks of tweaking, fiddling around, I figured I'd run through what settings I've settled on but most importantly I'll tell you why I chose them as when doing this stuff you need to be asking yourself constantly what is the goal and then tune to hit that goal. So what was the goal? For me, I wanted a system that could run 4K, 60 FPS most of the time. It is flight sim after all. For me, 60 FPS is an important number because I run on a 60 Hertz TV. It doesn't have any fancy variable refresh rate such as, you know, FreeSync or, or G-Sync. It's just a cheap and cheerful 300 pound-ish TV from LG. It's a 43 inch. Given that the TV doesn't support variable refresh rate, you need to be sending it a constant 60 FPS to match the TV's 60 Hertz refresh rate. Otherwise, you're gonna get lots of tearing and it's just gonna feel juddery and awful. In an ideal world, I would upgrade to a variable refresh rate display, but that means spending a lot more money. Uh, so I don't know, another video for another time perhaps. But for now, let's run through the settings I use to try and maintain 60 FPS at 4K in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So first up, NVIDIA frame generation. Now this is probably gonna be the most controversial part of the video as I know that this technology splits opinion and it's only available to a subset of the market, i.e. people that own an NVIDIA 4000 series GPU. However, if you're considering an upgrade or a new build, hopefully this can give you a little bit of context on what to expect from frame generation within the sim. Now, I would never use frame generation on a game like a competitive first-person shooter simply due to the input lag that it creates, but I think in flight sim it is a really good use case, as even when you're on short final, approaching an airport, if you look out of the window, things really aren't moving that fast past you. Not when you compare and contrast to like a twitchy first-person shooter, I don't know, like Counter-Strike or, or something like that. You know, games like that are won and lost by super fast reaction times, and I think frame gen is just not the right thing for that application. But for the sim, I think it's a really good thing. As for using DLSS upscaling, I've elected not to. I found it was necessary to get anywhere near 4K 30 FPS on my old 3070, but now I'm on a 4080 Super, and especially with frame gen, it's no longer necessary. Instead, I'm using a combination of TAA with frame generation. I really think these two settings go together very, very well, and it's important to note that you don't have to use DLSS upscaling in order to use frame generation. They are separate technologies. This way you get the benefit of frame gen without the blurriness that DLSS upscaling would give you, especially like on the PFDs with the, the speed and altitude tapes. It used to really bug me, but you know, what could you do? So we are here in the PMDG Boeing 737-800 landing into Edinburgh from Pirogi. In the top right, we've got the FPS counter provided by the SIM. And what's kind of handy is that the SIM FPS counter in the top right there is completely unaware of the frames that NVIDIA frame generation inserts. We have to use a separate program. I'm using MSI Afterburner to get the total FPS once frame generation has been taken into effect. And that's shown there in the top middle. So we get to see the raw FPS without frame generation and the FPS once frame gen has taken effect. It's really handy. The graphics settings used in this clip are those that I'll be recommending in the latter parts of this video, so stay tuned for them. Uh, the plane is doing an auto land, live weather is off, and I've set the time to midday, and we are running on sim update 14. It's going to be very interesting to see how these numbers change when sim update 15 drops, because of course they're saying that performance should hopefully get an improvement with sim update 15. Get subscribed for a follow-up video on that. But as you can see, frame generation pretty much takes what the sim is giving it and doubles it up giving us a really impressive frame rate. Now, for the sake of this benchmark, I am letting the sim chase as many frames as it possibly can in order to show you what can be achieved. But as we said earlier, I'm running a 60 Hertz TV, so I'm going to cap my frame rate to 60 in order for it to sync up with the refresh rate of the TV. So let's run it again with frame generation on with a 60 frames per second cap applied via the NVIDIA control panel and see how stable our 60 FPS really is. 
And there we go. As you can see, we're getting a really nice stable 60 frames per second. And it's no wonder, given that we were up in the 80s before we turned on our 60 frame per second frame cap. Um, an interesting point here, because I've set an FPS cap in the NVIDIA control panel, notice how the sim has capped itself to 30 FPS. It then lets frame gen double it up to give us our 60 rather than say the sim outputting the maximum it possibly can let's say 46 frames per second for the sake of argument then having frame gen top up the remaining 14 to get it to 60. so my hope is that by the sim limiting itself to 30 then relying on frame gen to double us to 60 we can hopefully get a more consistent experience because 30 isn't really that much of a tall order and then we can kind of rely on frame gen to just double it up for us to get us to 60. You might be wondering at this point why I decided to cap the FPS via the NVIDIA control panel and not use VSync. It's because I find it gives a much more stable experience. Everything just feels a bit clunky and delayed with VSync on, especially if you're you know, using, say, the MCDU in the Airbus. Just when you go, go to click those buttons, it just feels a little bit spongy. It doesn't feel quite right. So we've seen the difference frame generation can make to our FPS numbers and overall stability of those FPS numbers. But what settings are being used under the hood to get us to those numbers? As when you're using frame generation, it's very important to start from a decent baseline. Let's say, for example, you had 15 frames per second out of the sim and you relied on frame gen to get you to 30 FPS by doubling the 15. You think, OK, well, 30 FPS in flight sim isn't bad. Well, actually, that's going to be a pretty rubbish 30 FPS experience, whereas if you started from 30 within the sim or maybe 40 or even 50 then have frame gen step in double it up you're going to get a much nicer experience so even with frame gen it's important that we dial in the right settings to give you a decent experience pre-frame generation which then gives you a good experience post-frame generation so let's talk about the terrain level of detail this setting is going to have the biggest impact on your performance it not only increases the load on your gpu but it can also increase the load on your cpu so it's important to get this one right as for all the other settings i've chosen to go along with the terrain level of detail shown in these clips stay tuned as they'll be coming up so here's some side by sides of us coming into land at lax in the pmdg 737-800 Personally, I would say between 150 and 200 is what you should be aiming at. For me, that's the sweet spot between visuals while maintaining performance. So we've got a terrain level of detail of 150 on the left, 175 in the middle and 200 on the right, each showing the raw FPS at the sim at the bottom and the frame rate once frame gen has taken effect at the top via MSI Afterburner. As for what terrain level of detail I'm picking, I'm going to go with 200. Even though 150 and 175 are showing better numbers, we are still comfortably above our 60 FPS target, wow. post frame gen of course. And honestly, I feel like I've spent enough money, I damn well better be able to run a terrain level of detail of 200. But depending on your system, you may want to drop it down a bit. You know, even with a terrain level of detail of 150, I still think you're going to have a really great time in the sim. And if it gets you to a performance level that you need, then you know, do what you need to do. You're going to have a great experience. You can, of course, go higher up to a terrain level of detail of 400. But even with a 4080 Super and 5800 X3D, it quickly brings your system to its knees as you can see here so we've got a train level of detail of 300 and 400 running side by side and while it's just about managing it's too close for my liking i'm all about stability leaving a bit of gas in the tank and not running so close to the bleeding edge so we've spoken about frame gen we've spoken about train level of detail and those two alone can make a massive impact on your fps numbers but now let's talk about all the other settings you can tweak now, some of you might remember my previous graphic settings guide from some time ago now, and I recommended in that video that you start with the ultra preset and then tweak the following. Put grass and bushes to high, ray march reflections to high, terrain shadows to 1024, shadow maps to 1024, waves to high and texture super sampling to 4x4. So using these settings worked great with my 5600X and 3070 build. So my question is with the 4080 Super and 5800X3D, can I simply now just slide it all to the right and maintain 60 FPS at 4K with frame generation while running at a train level of detail of 200? Let's find out. Let's do a side by side. So we're coming into land into Gatwick in the Phoenix Airbus A320. This is the free version of Gatwick from FlightSim.to, a known heavy hitter in terms of the demand it places on your system. So 
let's see what happens. Like before, I'm showing you the frame counter from the sim, which does not account for the frame generated frames. That's at the bottom, and I've got MSI Afterburner counting the FPS, which includes the frames inserted by NVIDIA's frame generation at the top. I'm not using any frame rate cap as I wanted to see how far beyond 60 we can get with each. While I intend to cap my FPS to 60, you kind of want to know that your system can comfortably get beyond it in order to maintain a solid 60 once I've applied the frame cap. So you can see the optimized settings are running a teeny bit better than the maxed out settings. And while I found they really, really helped on my 5600X 3070 build, they seem to be having less of an impact here now we're running a more powerful 4080 Super in concert with a 5800X3D. In both cases, we're well above my 60 FPS target. And again, I kind of feel like I've paid enough for all this kit that I feel like I've earned the right to just you know, slide things to the right and forget about it. So that is what we're going to do. So to conclude, my current settings have me running at 4K using TAA anti-aliasing with DLSS frame generation enabled. I'm running a terrain level of detail of 200. And as for everything else, I'm sliding it to the right and maxing it out like a hooligan. 100. It is still flight simulator after all, so the occasional stutter is going to happen from time to time. But for the most part, I've been enjoying a really nice, smooth experience with these settings. If you're not already, get subscribed as we'll be doing lots more performance testing once Sim Update 15 arrives, as it's claimed that performance is going to get a big improvement in that update. Leave us a comment, let us know what settings you're running at, share it around with the community, help each other out. And until next time, folks, take the very best care of yourselves. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. And as always, happy flying.